This video is brought to you by WowInsider.com and yours truly, C. Christian Moore. I said in last week's Bloodsport that I'd be trying to bring you guys some quality PvP videos, and this is the first of those videos. This is my first attempt at a PvP video of any kind. Uh, the programs I'm using are Fraps, Windows Movie Maker, and YouTube. I've heard derogatory things about the low quality of each of those programs, which is acceptable because it'll be reflecting me and this video perfectly. So what we're doing here is we're running a raid battleground in uh, the Battle of Gilneas. <clears throat> and what we're doing is we're running uh, a 7 DPS, 3 healer uh, team composition. What we're doing is we're sending 7 over to the lighthouse, uh, putting 2 at mine, and then I was actually the scout um, to go down and see what's happening at Waterworks. The reason we're doing that is because when... Uh, only one person goes to a, a place, you have more density in the other two. You really just want to control two uh, points throughout this this entire battle. Um, so sending like a 5-5-5 five, five, five type formation usually doesn't work out very well. Um, the reason for that is just because you know, you'll have five people waiting at one place and you'll have ten at the other two. If the opposing team has fifteen at those other two, uh, chances are you're going to lose both. And then subsequently you'll probably lose the third even. Which actually happens here. Uh, the alliance does somewhat similar to a 555. Um, anyway, so I'm just coming down here. Uh, I saw one shaman. I told everybody on vent that there's just one shaman there. Hunter came out of shadow melt late. I don't know what he's doing. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I communicated with my team that I needed one to help. After the hunter showed up, I said I needed two to help. Um, so two came over from Lighthouse, as you can see, a mage and a paladin right there. And so we're just going to 3v2 here. Now the reason we only send over two people is because we want um, as low a disparity as possible. And what that means is we don't want you know, our whole team coming over to take Waterworks, because that will leave very few in the other two locations. That's really the entire way how to play this battle. It's all about disparity. And that's a word I'll be uh, talking about and bringing up um, pretty, pretty often, and it just means that your team has an advantage in how many people are located at each point. And even though there's 15 versus 15, a lot of times you can get, um, you know, an 8v7 uh, type thing going on, where you'll have a little bit more, and that'll be able to turn the tide. Now, if your team is uh, much more superior, like geared or skilled, uh, than your opponents, then you can do, you know, wacky things, like you can have two people take on four, or three people take on, you know, five or six. Um, but that's pretty rare. And that's not really what you want to strive for. So we have all three points right now, uh, luckily. And what, what we don't want to do right now, which I see a lot of teams doing, is just playing defense. Um, that gets you in a lot of problems. Because what you want to do is you kind of want to uh, evenly split up the amount of defenders that you have. And like I said before, you know, with the 555 type theory, um, it doesn't usually work out that well. So what you want to do is you want to anticipate where the enemy is going to attack and where you're going to attack them from once they leave that point. So we see here that there's a large mass at Lighthouse. And this is obvious. We don't even have to, you know, do vent for this type of thing. Um, we had a lot of people at Lighthouse. They all died. They took it. Um, and they all spawned at Lighthouse. Uh, this, is, this is just the way that spawn points work. So because they all spawned at Lighthouse, uh, they're all going to either make a run on mine or they're all going to make a run on Waterworks. Now, earlier, they made a run on mine and it didn't work. They all died and that's how we were able to get... Uh, lighthouse while we were controlling waterworks because they were all trying to attack mine. So obviously where they're going to go is they're going to go to waterworks. It's just trial and error. If you go to mine, you don't succeed. You go to waterworks because there's going to be less people there. So what our defense at waterworks is trying to do right now is just trying to stay as live as long as possible and take them off the flag. Now you can see in the little mini map uh, down underneath that our team is running from mine to go to lighthouse. That is immensely important. That's probably the most important thing with any type of uh, Rathi Basin, Battle of Glenaeus, um, you know, capture the flag territory type battleground. What you want to do is you want to try and figure out where uh, the greatest amount of disparity is in terms of, you know, the opposing team not having a lot of people at a capture point, and you want to send people from your other capture point that's being well defended and not attacked to that capture point while the enemy team is attacking. That might sound confusing, but that's exactly what we're doing right now. So essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to um, mimic the Alliance's Zerg, but we want to do it successfully because we're going to, uh, we're going to for sure take uh, Lighthouse here. I mean, there's no question about it. The majority of the Alliance team is at Waterworks. Now, they're going to get Waterworks, but that's fine because we have mine. So what we've done is instead of letting ha the Alliance have both Waterworks and uh, Lighthouse, 
we're going to have uh, mine, which is kind of our, our little fortress or a little hold whatnot. Um, and then we're just going to, to trade them basically, uh, you know, one for one. If they take waterworks, we'll take lighthouse. If they took mine, we take lighthouse. Um, you know, wherever they're going to send their team, if they send seven or eight people, because we have two points, we'll just send the majority of our team to that other point to take it. So as you can see, we have both the lighthouse and the mine, and the alliance has uh, only the waterworks. Now, uh, right now, you also want to predict where they where they want to go. Now, I am uh, recording this <clears throat> after the fact, which uh, I'd like to change in the future. I might be recording vent and just attaching that to the video for the next one of these. Now, I'm a, I'm a much better tactician and strategist than I'm a player. Not only will this video reflect that, but also my play. If you clicked on this video expecting to see insane gameplay, you'll probably be dis disappointed. I'm going to try and uh, bring you guys well-played arenas and battlegrounds, rather than like a montage um, highlight reel. Until about a week ago, I actually didn't touch this Warlock for maybe like six months. This is also my first time playing Affliction since Season 5. I'm not a huge Affliction fan. I <laughs> like the demonology and uh, destruction playstyles more, especially in Battlegrounds. Being able to assist teammates when they stun or slow an enemy is way more important than being able to put out high consistent damage. Now you'll see at the end of the video, I'm actually highest on damage done, but you'll notice that battles around me go on for very long, uh, because it's difficult to burst someone down as Affliction. Healers can usually just get through the damage by tossing a hot or uh, a cast time heal. I actually don't burn any soul shards in this entire video, except to instant summon fell hunters. This is partially due to the uh, soul burn bug that warlocks have right now, but it's more accurately attributed to me not being comfortable with the mechanic yet. What you're seeing, unfortunately, is largely a level 80 warlock in a level 85 shell. I'm relearning the class and trying to adapt to uh, new keybinds. But anyway, um, as you can see, uh, the Alliance team has sent more to Waterworks. And again, our goal is just to um, kill them, uh, survive for as long as possible, and uh, and try to figure out you know where and how to attack. Now we're obviously not attacking from waterworks. If they get it, you know, if they go up and cap it, you know, we might just give it to them and, and run off. That's a that's good in very uh, few circumstances though, because what you're doing is you're basically telling the other team that now they can attack mine, uh, which they would clearly do. So what you want to do is you just want to stay at you know, alive as long as possible so that they think that there's still uh, people there to kill. Earlier on, um, you know, we had a few scragglers from the one attack on mine, and our team said over vent, you know, we're just going to finish them off, and then we're going to go to Lighthouse. And uh, I actually said very loudly, um, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, that, you know, don't do that. Uh, just go right to Lighthouse, because if you, you know, waste time killing two or three people, um, you know, that's so much more time that you could have to actually be attacking the lighthouse and, uh, and kind of like softening those people up for when the brunt of the team comes over. You know, if you have four on three, I mean, the vast chances that those four are going to win, especially when you had, you know, seven or eight people attacking those three earlier and just, you know, getting them low and then leaving. Uh, what this team doesn't do is they don't uh, ever really attack mine successfully. And they could do that if they only left four here and then went straight to mine. But they don't do that. Um, they usually leave, um, you know, not enough to actually uh, do anything, um, or they don't pull out at the right times. So, like right now, we only have two or three here, and they have three. What they should do is they should just leave. I mean, they should just take up, go off, either defend lighthouse or take mine. But they don't. They stand around and try to take the flag. Um, that's not a really good strategy, largely because they are, um, you know, making themselves so much more disadvantaged in the other. Uh, objectives. If they have three here, that means that they have three uh, less on, you know, mine, or three less defending Lighthouse. If, you know, two or three of us here at uh, Waterworks can sufficiently deal with them, and are at least giving them kind of a run for their money, or, or you know, doing a type of status quo type thing, um, you know, really they should just get out of there, and they should just go and attack another point. That'll leave two or three of us here at Waterworks. You see that, you know, two or three of us are still staying here at Waterworks. We're just trying to figure out, um, you know, where we're going to go to next, who's going to go there. Um, you know, if Waterworks, uh, well, excuse me, if Mine needs a healer, or if Lighthouse needs more DPS, etc. Now you see that we, uh, we failed actually on our assault on Lighthouse, because um, we had an overpopulation at Mine. We didn't uh, quite do the numbers correctly. 
and so we had a lot of people spawn uh, at Waterworks. So what we're doing now is because they're getting attacked at Mine, we're going over to Lighthouse. Uh, we know that they're attacking Mine because of Vent. So there's only two people here. Uh, there'll be a third that enters shortly, a warrior. Um, <clears throat> meanwhile, we have you know five, six people here, something like that. Uh, so we're going to, you know, hopefully take this relatively soon. Again, this is another time where I'd much rather be um, demonology or uh, destruction. So uh, you'll you'll notice throughout the video, um, you know, you've probably noticed throughout the video that I bring up the large battleground map for less than a second pretty frequently. It's to judge the positioning of my teammates uh, on the various objectives. If I see teammates are spread out very far away from the flag, it means there's either no action or a ton of action going on. With vent, that's pretty easy to tell, but it's just uh, it's just nice to figure out, you know, who's doing what, who's fighting away from the flag, things like that. Um, just to either talk to those players later or just to, you know, say fight on the flag on vent, so you know maybe somebody will remember, uh, things like that. Uh, this battleground is actually my uh, my by far my favorite battleground. I've only played it maybe five or ten times. Uh, but the battles are always thrilling, action-packed. Even this one, where uh, towards the end here, honestly, we um, we start playing a little poor because uh, we're all kind of celebrating over Vent. <laughs> but um, this is actually my bad here. I, I let the warrior get to this flag while I'm concentrating on the hunter, just because we're joking about stuff on Vent. Um, so one of the reasons that we uh, run seven DPS and three healers. Um, I see a lot of teams actually running 6 DPS and 4 healers. I think that's probably just a little too much. Um, you know, if you think about it, if you think about um, a healer and a DPS defending a point, or a healer and 2 DPS defending a point, if you go up with 2 healers and 1 DPS, so most of your team is healers at a, at a point and the other team is mostly DPS, the team with mostly DPS is probably going to win. Um, healers don't have a lot of CC. I mean, shamans have, you know, shocks and... and uh, you know, totems and whatnot, um, and druids have cyclone, but those are fairly easy to disrupt, and also, like, when a shaman needs to heal, I mean, he needs to heal, he can't be, he can't be, like, shocking, you know, all the enemy DPS and whatnot, so the two DPS, one healer is going to fare better against two healer uh, DPS, whether, whether attacking or defending, um, so more healers isn't necessarily, like, the best way to go about things. So what we try to do is we try to get, um, you know, one healer and two DPS uh, pretty much wherever we go. You know, that's kind of like the basics. And if you have three healers, uh, you know, that's that's six DPS right there. And if you add a DPS to one of those uh, categories, or if that extra one is a, a prot warrior, you know, is a flag carrier, um, you can get a lot more accomplished that way than you can, um, you know, maybe with a with a six four. So I think seven three is a little better for. Um, good amount of reasons. Maybe I'll talk, talk about that in a, uh, in a future article. So one of the uh, cool little tricks with Battlegrounds, which I don't think a lot of people have caught on to yet, um, and actually our warrior forgot about it this game, uh, is that if you have anyone that has an important role that should be able to switch between those roles. So for instance, we have a warrior that, uh, that runs our flag. You know, we prefer um, a warrior rather than a uh, druid just because we don't have access to a feral druid, I guess. Um, but we have a prot warrior who also can play arms, um, you know, within our guild. So what we can do is we can all enter the battleground and then tell him what battleground it is so that he can enter as either prot or arms depending on um, what best suits the situation. Now I was going to go in as affliction, you know, one way or the other. So I could have gone in, told, you know, everybody what battleground it is, and we can actually adjust our healer account, you know, if uh, we have an elemental shaman and they want to go resto, or if we have a boomkin and he wants to go resto, uh, you know, based on the battleground. And this is where I start my nervous tick of jumping around because the battle's just about over. <laughs> um, it was a solid victory for us, not necessarily because we outgeared or outskilled our opponents to a ridiculous degree, but just because our strategy was a bit better. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and the constant world map didn't annoy you too badly. Uh, it was a pleasure to make this video for you, and I'm looking forward to next time. If you have any questions or advice, either on gameplay or on things you'd like me to talk about in future videos, please feel free to use the comment section below. I would love to read them. Thanks for watching.